What's good, y'all? It's the message of God here. And I wanted to drop one for y'all today. And you know what, y'all? You just don't know. You just don't know how good God is. And I'm telling you, you got to understand that the word of God is just like, it's, it means more than anything on this earth. And you got to understand, because when you know the word of God, it's like this. Especially like, if you don't know him, you should read about him, you know. It's very important to have that relationship with God. And it's important to read your Bible. And the reason why it's important to read your Bible, y'all, is to get to know him, okay? It's to get to know who God is. It's like, how can you worship somebody you don't know? So you got to get to know him in order to worship him, right? I'm just saying. So, you know, God led me to John... Let me say St. John. St. John chapter 5, y'all. And I'm going to read, starting from verse 19 through 47. And it speaks on, from 19 through 29, it speaks on the Son's witness to the Father. And then from 30 to 47, it speaks on the Father's witness to the Son. And, you know, like I was trying to tell you about that relationship that you need with God. You know, if you are walking in his image, you need to really understand this word right here. Because, you know, John chapter 5 speaks on so many things, especially before it gets to the 5,000 fed and Jesus, the bread of life and him walking on the sea. Because you know why? You got to see Jesus as that bread, as your daily bread. You know, you have to see God as your daily bread. You need him in order to to live, in order to have that eternal living life. Because he's the bread of life. When he told you to take this bread as the body of Christ, he said, take this as the body of Christ in, rem in remembrance of me. You know what I'm saying? And when he tells you to take this wine as his blood, you got to understand, y'all, how serious this is, communion, and, and being a part and sharing a part of the body of Christ. You see what I'm saying? You have to have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, you guys. And it's so important that you do in order to understand him. Okay? Then let me get into this because I saw something that was really, 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 really deep. Okay, hold on. My bad, y'all. I was trying to fix something, you know. But anyways, I saw something that was really, really deep. And when I saw it, you guys, you, you guys just not would not believe it. So it's just another way of looking at things. But, you know, I said, you know what? God don't lead me to things for no reason. And because of that, I'm going to always share with you guys, you know, what I come across and, and um, what the Lord gives me in the spirit. Okay. Now, what I noticed is I did not see these punctuations in the first part of the son's witness to the father. But in the father's witness to the son, I noticed some punctuation that's in here and I'm going to get to them as I go along. But let me read to you um, the son's witness to the father. Now, um, I want to read the King James Version to you. But the reason why I like reading the breakdown, because it gives so many emphasis and it breaks down exactly what it is. So that way you can, for, for more understanding for people who don't understand. And um, I would like to read both, you know, since I'm only going to do like one chapter today. I'm a part of the chapter five. Let's go through it, okay? So here's the King James Version, you guys, starting from verse 19 to 29. Okay, and then I'm going to read the breakdown. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. 
For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raises up the dead and quicken them, even so the Son quickened him, quickened whom he will. For the Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the Son. Now I'm going to read the, the, the King James Version um, Amplified, but let me read this part to you, okay, before I, before I read that breakdown, okay? For the Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, with, has, with which has sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you that the hour is coming and now when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they shall hear and they that shall hear shall live. Okay, do you hear that? That's why it's important that you hear. Because when you hear, not only do you hear the word, but you are able to understand. You are able to, it's like you're coming into knowing, okay? When you hear, you're coming into to acknowledging and you're coming into knowing exactly what you're hearing. So when you hear something, you're able to interpret, you know, what it is that you're actually hearing. You're able to recognize, may I say that, instead of just interpreting. But I'll say this, before you can interpret what you hear, you'll be able, I'll say, to acknowledge, to like, to, to be able to get the understanding and recognize the voice that you hear. You see what I'm saying? You want to be able to tell apart what it is that you hear. That's why it's important that you know the word of God so you will be able to understand what it is exactly that you're hearing and who you're hearing it from, okay? So that way you can have that discernment. So keep on listening, okay? Really, really, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. For, verse 26, for as the Father has life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself, in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. All, <laughs> all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Okay, so it does not matter if you are here or not. You're going to hear his voice. Okay, you're going to hear his voice because, oh my goodness, he's going to be very, very loud for the whole world to know. Okay, dead and alive. Okay, just, just listen. And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Okay. Now, when I read the Amplified, this is how it breaks down saying, so you can understand it better. It says, so Jesus answered them back to verse 19, saying, I assure you, most solemnly, I tell you, the son is able to do nothing of himself, of his own accord. Okay. Of his own accord. You guys, he's all, Jesus is always showing the example of, of how to be to the father. Okay. How to be to God. Okay. How we are supposed to answer him. Okay. He's an example in himself. Okay. So that way, look, the reason why the word was made flesh is so that we can understand. Okay. So we can understand him. His, his word is stories of him. This is Jesus. That's why I say I see Jesus in everything. Every time when I read the word, I always see him in it. I always see him in every single story. Okay. Because it, this is all about him. Okay. We are the witnesses of him. We are all made different, but we all tell the story of God. Let's, let's go. So Jesus answered him by saying, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, the son is able to do nothing of himself, of his own accord. 
but he is able to do only what he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does is what the son does in the same way in his return. The father dearly loves the son and discloses to shows him everything that he himself does. And he will disclose to him, let him see greater things yet than these, so that you may marvel and be full of wonder and astonishment, okay? Because of who he is, all right? Now keep listening, okay? Just as the father raises up the dead and gives them life, makes them live on, even so the son also gives life to whomever he wills and is pleased to give it. Okay, even the father judges no one. Okay, look, y'all, this, this, this is why I be telling y'all all, all this little stuff that y'all be doing that's petty. And then y'all be judging other people, putting your mouth on people that you shouldn't be doing it. And the reason why I'm saying this is because, look, who are you doing this for? Who are you doing it for? Okay, God did not ever. You tell me right now, if you judge somebody, tell me, answer this. Make sure you ask yourself this. Did God tell me to judge this person? Are you telling me that the Holy Spirit of God told you to judge another individual on what it is that he or she is doing? Ask yourself that. Ask yourself, you know what? God told me that I should judge this person by what it is that they're doing. When we all have sinned, y'all, we all have fallen short of his glory. You cannot do that. Remind yourself the reason why you don't judge other people is because God is the one that's going to judge us all at the end. We are all trying to make it. So therefore, it's up to you to preach the word, the truth, to tell the word, the truth that, that he has given us so that way we can correct ourselves. Okay, you supposed to you supposed to tell his word for correction so people can feel that in their hearts. You know, when they're doing wrong, they're supposed to be able to, to feel it in their hearts what it is they're doing wrong when they hear the word. All right. So look. Even the father, and y'all, please forgive me if y'all hear, you know, in the other room, the, the other TV that's going on. Because, you know what, I just, I, I couldn't just sit there and, and watch television. You know, I, I had this word building up inside me and it was just like, you know, man, I'm, I'm telling you, when God gives me something, I, I have to be obedient. And, and, and this is where I'm at. All right. So here we go. Even the father judges no one. For he has given all judgment, the last judgment and the whole business of judging entirely into the hands of the son. So that all men give honor, reverence, homage to the son, just as they give honor to the father. Okay. In fact, whoever does not honor the son does not honor the father. See who has sent him. I assure you most solemnly, most solemnly, I tell you, the person whose ears are open to my words, okay, capital M, my words, who listens to my message and believes and trusts in and clings to and relies on him who sent me has, possesses now eternal life. So it's just like this. You have to believe, you guys, you have to believe in him. You have to believe in him. You have to accept him. How else are you going to be able to understand his word if you don't believe in him? You know what I mean? How are you going to be able to sit up here and 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 hear hear the word or know the word of God if you don't if you don't believe in him? It's like how do you believe in anything else, you know, that that you believe in if you don't It's just it's just like this. Look. I told you guys, everything came from the Bible first. How else would you know about a God or God in general if you didn't know about the Holy Bible? If you didn't know about the Bible, would you even know that there was a God? Would you even know that there was, you know, anything else to, to worship or, or if there was anything else to do? Like, that's what I was trying to tell you guys. Look, everything comes from the Word of God, y'all. I'm telling you, just, just pay attention to everything, okay? All right, let's go. Verse 24 again, and I'm in Amplify. I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, yes, I read things over again because I want y'all to hear it. The person whose ears are open to my words, who listen to my message and believes and trusts in and clings to 
and relies on him who sent me has possesses now eternal life. So do you see that? If you listen to the Lord and you trust in him and rely on him, you will now have eternal life through Jesus, the Holy Spirit, okay? Through his word. Let's keep going. And he does not come into judgment, does not incur sentence of judgment, will not come under condemnation, but he has already passed over out of death into life. Believe me, when I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, the time is coming and is here now when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear it shall live. And this is why I feel like where we are right now. That's why I was led to read it and to read it to y'all. Okay. I believe that everything God has given me, I've seen it come to pass and I know that is right now. So you guys, please, please, if you can, please turn your lives around. Please just, you know, if you if you can, I need you guys to please to just turn away from your wicked ways, okay? Repent from your sins. I know things can't happen overnight, but you know what? You have to make an effort. Some of you guys are just making up a lot in excuses, but you don't even make an effort. You don't make an effort to to even try, to even st to even try to make a change. So some of y'all out there got to try to make an effort, okay? All right, let's keep going. For even as the Father has life in himself and in self-existence, so he has given to the Son to have life in himself and be self-existent. And he has given him authority and granted him power to execute, exercise, practice, judgment, because he is a son of man, very man. Do not be surprised and wonder at this, for the time is coming when all those who are in the tombs shall hear his voice, y'all, okay, and they shall come out. Those who have practiced doing good will come out to the resurrection of new life, and those who have done evil will be raised for judgment, raised to meet their sentence, okay? Now, when I came to the second portion of this, the father's witness to the son. Y'all, y'all, I'm going to title this because, yo, I'm telling y'all right here. When I came to this part right here, look, it stood out to me because this is what this whole thing is about. I seen the Lord, the Alpha, the Omega, everything in this one little sentence, in this one verse. Okay, look. I'm going to jump here and tell you guys what I'm going to name it before I get into it. Because I need to explain where I'm coming from. All right? So, okay, I'm at St. John chapter 5. And I saw this in verse 39. All right? And it says here, search the scriptures. Okay? That's the King James Version. I wanted to read that so you guys can know what that means. Search the scriptures. Okay? Search the scriptures. So, Y'all, if you do not think that you need the word of God or need to read it, trust me, you do. This is the whole key to the whole entire thing. Search the scriptures, okay? If you, man, you got it. You got to read this, okay? Search the scriptures. Everything is in the Bible. That's why when I did the song Bars, I said the Bible always reveals secrets because it does, okay? So look, let me tell you guys what I got. Now, from the King James Version... Wait, can I jump over here? Because I, I don't want to get too excited, all right? But I have to tell you this in order to tell you that. So let me jump to verse 39. We're going to read the whole thing, okay, and get into it. But let me go to verse 39 because I was on this for hours. But let me tell you guys something, okay? Verse 39 says, in the Amplified, okay, King James Amplified, look. You search and investigate and pour over the scriptures diligently. Because you suppose and trust that you have eternal life through them. And these very scriptures testify about me. Okay? So when I got over here, I said, you know, well, what is poor? What is poor means? P-O-R-E means. Okay? And when I look down here, I seen it and it says here. It says, hold on. Let me get it right quick. Because y'all, I was tripping. I was just like, hold on. I got to break all of this down. It says, a minute opening in the surface, especially the skin. Okay, so I saw that, what it means there. 
it's like an ascent. It's like opening up. It's like, you know, a, a pores. You know how you have pores that, that that's an opening up? Okay. It's like this. You search and investigate and pour over the scriptures. It's like you, you, you dig all through these scriptures. Okay. You go through all of these scriptures and stuff like this. You try to, it says you concentrate your attention on and devote. It's like you devote your hours and, and focus on something that you, you trying to look for. Right. It's like you, you searching for something. So you just like, you really, 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 really going through it. Right. And it says that you search and investigate and pour over the scriptures diligently because you suppose and trust that you will have eternal life through them. And these very scriptures testify about me. He's telling you, y'all, that these scriptures are about him. That you are supposed to make this about him. You guys are talking about all, all you guys are saying is this. You guys are saying, man, you know what? This ain't nothing but just stories. And all these stories in here is about, you know, so many different people and stuff like that. But let me tell you something. The reason why you see it like that. Is because you don't hear right. Because the reason why you don't see him is because you ain't searching. You see what I'm saying? Hold on, y'all. You gotta believe. Some of you guys don't even be believing. But look, let's let's get over here and let me explain where I'm at. All right, let me explain this because I'm, I'm I'm too excited and I'm trying to explain what I'm trying to say. Now look, we're gonna jump back to the King James Virgin, okay? And we're gonna we're gonna get back over here so I can break it down to you where I'm coming from. All right, so when I saw these in the Bible, let me see, one, two, three. Okay, I saw three of them, okay, three of them. Let me tell you what I saw. In this scripture, I saw in this format, in this paragraph, I kept seeing this symbol and I was wondering, I'm like, what does this symbol mean? Because what you guys don't understand is that <laughs> when I was looking in the Bible, like yesterday, when I was telling you guys about the, the horses and stuff that we see in the, in the words, a lot of stuff in here, you guys, are not just parables. But do you guys remember back then when they had like, uh, like when they didn't even have the word? When everything was in symbols, like the Egyptians and Hebrews and, and, and stuff like that back then. And they only had like like uh, uh, like pictures and stuff like that. I'm telling you, I start looking at the word and I start seeing a whole bunch of different things that, you know, that describes uh, different things. And have you guys ever looked at the word and it start to, I, I, I'm just saying, it, it may just be me, but. I, I start to see a whole lot of different things. It's like metaphorically speaking, when I see things, I start to put stuff together as I'm reading the word of God. And when I saw this, I said, wow, it just put emphasis on the word when I saw these three markings. OK, so therefore, when I looked it up, it was like this. I said, what is this symbol that I see that's here? Okay, in front of this paragraph. All right. So the symbol that I saw is it looks like a backwards P, right? It looks that's what it looked like a backwards P. I says the paragraph mark represents. Okay, hold on, y'all. I'm gonna read this. I said, what does this symbol mean? It says the paragraph mark represent a paragraph break in a document. Okay, it indicates. Where one paragraph ends and another begins. And, you know, like I said, when I heard that, I already was just thinking of the word of God. I was just like this. You know what? Jesus said, I am the alpha and the omega. And I'm just looking at how this is at the beginning of three of these. And each in each one of these um, verses here on 32, 36 and 39, the King, King James Version. I almost can't even talk. Just too excited. The father's witness to the son. In verse 32, 36, and 39, I see these three markings, okay? They, they all three symbolizes the paragraph mark represents a, parag a paragraph break in a document. It indicates where one paragraph ends and another begins. And I told you, it made me think of the Alpha and Omega, you know, how he's the beginning and the end. And it's something how his word never ends, okay? 
it never ends. But he speaks of these things so that way you can see him in his word. He's everywhere and he's omnipresent. Listen, listen, y'all, listen. Okay, it indicates it, um, it indicates where one paragraph ends and another begins when formatting marks are visible. When formatting marks are visible, the paragraph mark is displayed as a backwards facing letter P with two vertical lines next to it. Okay, so that's what I saw. And it's something how he made the invisible visible for us to see. Okay. Oh gosh. I wish somebody out there would understand what I'm talking about. Okay. This symbol was in this Bible, but yet God is supposed to be invisible, but he's visible at all times through his word. <laughs> okay. So anyways, I kept on going y'all. When I read this, I said, Oh my goodness. And so I continued to read and it says, what are Formatting marks. Formatting marks are symbols or characters that represent non-printing elements in a document such as spaces, paragraph breaks, tabs, and line breaks. They are used to indicate the structure and formatting of a document and are typically invisible. Typically invisible in the final printed or published version. Now, I know it may not make no difference to y'all, but I see everything that the Lord had me to do in my life, even though it was just a, a small job, a task that I took on, you know what I'm saying, to help out a company, right? And I had did this, I won't say the name of the company, but um, but look, y'all, so I did this small office job, right? But it was a big job to them. And um, I had to do like some, cali I'll say it like this, I'm trying to say it without saying a lot, um, calibrating and some... Um, formatting myself so what i had to do is like let's put it like this there was a let's say there's a group of, of of important people let's just say like lawyers right and some of the time when you have a group of people let's say that you're trying to hire or even a, a manager right we'll have a group of people sitting at a large table and we don't want to sit up here and um uh, uh let's say like this we want to talk to you guys all at the same time so anyways, I had to print out these, these, uh, this format of these documents all together. And I made a folder, each of the same thing. Okay. But it, the, but the, the markings will tell me exactly where, how to line these paragraphs up and how to calibrate, how to put things in order. And I printed them out and put them all in a folder and I gave them all out to everybody that was, um, that was supposed to be there at that office. So if it was like eight people, I had to make them all the same way, look all the same and all the same way. But it just brought me to this and how important it is. But these printings that you do after you print them out, you're not going to print out those indents and those markings that you see that you're given when you're supposed to like um, put the, 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 the papers and stuff together. They give it to you. So when you either type it out or when you got to do them, it's so that way you can know where it's supposed to be at. Right? So I'm trying to explain to you guys. I'm going to hope you guys hear it in the word. Those who get it, get it. Those who don't, don't. But let me tell you, you see them before the job is done. Okay? So you see the format before the job is done. But after it's done, it's not there anymore. But yet God made something invisible, visible. Okay. Let's keep on going. I'm going to keep on going. So then here it goes here. It says, why should I care? Why should I care about it if, if, if about a format? So formatting marks can be provided, okay? Formatting marks can be provide, can, oh, I'm sorry, y'all. Formatting marks can provide valuable information about the layout and structure. I should just read that. And structure of a document. They can help you identify and fix formatting issues, adjusting space, align text, and ensure consistent Formatting throughout your document. Understanding formatting marks can be particularly useful when working with complex documents or when troubleshooting formatting problems. Okay, so I read all of that to you guys so that way you can understand why I'm trying to show you why this was important to know reading these three paragraphs, okay, 
that's going to start off with these markings on it, okay? Those who have the King James Version Bible, I don't know if it's in your Bible, but it's in mine, and this is what I saw in the King James Version, okay? All right, then I saw this, verse 39. I told you I'm going to read it all together, but hold on. Verse 39, it says, it starts with that little mark, okay? That little P, and it says, search the scriptures, and then a semicolon, okay? So the semicolon, when I looked that up, y'all, I'm, I'm talking about I was going there. I was led to do this, okay? The semicolon becomes a symbol. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I'm doing it wrong. Wait, wait, wait. A semicolon has two general uses to clarify a series and to indicate two closely related sentences, okay? Series. If one or more element in a series contain a comma, Use semicolon to separate them. Include a semicolon before the final conjunction. It's just like this, y'all. I went, oh gosh. And then I even found that little article down here with what, what somebody had written, okay? It said this What does a semicolon mean for mental health? I don't know why I went to all of these things, but I saw this. Look, the semicolon has become a symbol of hope for people who have battled depression, anxiety, addiction and other mental health issues. It is a reminder that even though their story could have ended there, they chose to continue on. Y'all, and it just made me think of how that semicolon was at the end of that. Search the scriptures. It's just like this. When you read something, oh gosh, when God gives you something, y'all, you, you might not see it right away. But it doesn't end right there. Your story doesn't end right there. That's why he says, search the scriptures. Seek and ye shall find. It's just like this. It, it's not over yet. But but yet he's giving you more and more and more and more without you even noticing it. Okay? You up there wondering why he had two fish and five loaves of bread. But you didn't even know yet that he was the bread of life to begin with. He wanted you to believe in him. But all you looked at it is, is as food. All you looking at is being fruitful and multiply, but yet you didn't see the seed that was given. You didn't even know who was the bread of life right in front of you. All you was just looking at that is not enough, but yet one can feed 10,000. You, you just don't understand if you just had him. It's enough. Okay. Let me go ahead and read the scripture to y'all. I just wanted to give y'all that because I had saw that, you know, those two marks that was right there. And, you know, it just took me somewhere when I seen it. It had me to look it up because I'm like, why are these three marks right here, you know, in verse 32, 36, and 39? And then when I got searched the scripture and it had a semicolon, I'm just like, hold on. It's just like it's telling me to, to keep on looking, okay, from beginning to the end. Because it don't just stop right there. That's what I'm going to call this, y'all. I'm telling you. Now, let's go ahead and get into it. All right? Man, I'm, I'm going to read the breakdown version. But I told y'all where to find it at. Okay? Let's go. I didn't mean to drag this out. And I didn't mean to, to fumble over my words or anything. Or be too excited, y'all. I apologize. But I was so excited because it was so much that was given to me. And, and it's such a little time that I wanted to share. But at least I recorded it so you would know how to look for it. Or... or or what I'm talking about. All right. Let's go. Verse 30 says. I'm reading the Amplified King James Version. I am able. To do nothing. Because verse 39 don't say. Search the scripture. In the Amplified. But it's going to tell you exactly what that means. All right. So let's go. Verse 30. I am able to do nothing. From myself independently. Remind y'all. Of my own accord. But only as I am taught by God. And as I get his orders. Even as I hear. I judge. I decide as I am bidden to decide. As the voice comes to me. As the voice comes to me. So I give a decision. And my judgment. Is right, just, and righteous because, guess why? I do not seek or consult my own will. 
So therefore, that's why I tell you guys, what are you doing it for when you do something for the Lord? Who are you doing it for? Okay, whenever that you call yourself a, a person of God, whether you're a messenger, whether you're speaking uh, uh, his word, or whether you're talking about him or anything, anything that you do for God, I'm telling you right now, you have to do it off of his will and not off of yours. Okay, you're not doing it for you to get seen. You're not doing it for you to get views. You're not doing it for you to gain fame. You're not doing it for, for it's not to acknowledge you. It's to acknowledge him. And then he will bless you. Let's keep on going before I, before I start getting into it. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Because I'll, I'll go on. All right. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Even as I hear. Okay. Okay. No, 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 no. Because I do not seek or consult my own will. I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself. My own aim. My own purpose. But only the will and pleasure of the Father who sent me. Verse 31, if I alone testify in my behalf, do you hear that? <laughs> Y'all, look, look at the King James Version part. Verse 31 it says, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Listen to it. Break down. If I alone testify in my behalf, if, if I testify in my own behalf, listen, y'all, my testimony is not valid. And cannot be worth anything. So if you sitting up here testifying in your own behalf. As if you made these things happen. As if you made success just, just fall from the sky. As if you just got up on your own two feet. And think that everything that you're doing is on your account. If you sitting up here saying, you know what, yeah man, you know what. And you don't even... First and foremost, if you don't believe, how do you even thank the Father? How do you even thank Jesus Christ? You know, I want to give a shout out to know. You, you're giving a shout out to all of these people. But you don't give a shout out to God, to Jesus Christ. You don't give a shout out to him. He's the one that did it all. He's the only one that does good. How you sit up here, give a shout out to anybody else when you couldn't have made it through anything unless you had him. But yet you do not believe. You don't believe. So you telling me that what you got that was short of a of a miracle, that that happened to you, that that the situation that you got up out of, you think that you got up out of there because you did it? You think that you made those choices to, to turn around your life is because you did it? You think you, because you know what? Let me keep on going. Let me think. Let me let me just keep going, y'all. You you get the point where I'm coming from. So let me read. If I alone testify in my behalf, capital M, in my behalf, my testimony is not valid and cannot be worth anything. There is another who testifies concerning me. And I know and am certain that his evidence on my behalf is true and valid. You yourselves have sent an inquiry to John and he has been a witness to the truth, but I do not receive a mere Oh, Listen to this. Verse 34, y'all. <clears throat> Look, first and foremost, King James says, but I received not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. Amplify, but I do not receive a mere human witness. A mere human witness. The evidence which I accept on my behalf is not from man. But I simply mention all these things in order that you might be saved and may kept safe and sound. Man, do you understand what spirit and in truth means? Do you understand living in your spiritual living in your spiritual life, in your spiritual body, y'all? Do you understand? Do you understand how you're supposed to speak to God? You can't be in the flesh and speak to him. How do you how do you expect to be doing? Look, let me try to explain this. How do you expect to be doing all these wicked things and all these wrong things and just feel like, you know what, I'm just going to I can have a conversation with God. But yet you don't even believe in him. You don't trust in him. You don't seek him. You don't worship him. You don't praise him. You don't acknowledge him. 
Matter of fact, you don't even acknowledge him in all the things you do. You don't even acknowledge him for the small things for waking you up in the morning. Thank God I was able to take a step. <clears throat> thank God I was able to, to thank him, to know him, to remember him. Let, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. But I do not receive a mere human witness. The evidence which I accept on my behalf is not for man. But I simply mention all these things in order that you may be saved made and kept safe and sound john was a lamp do you hear that john was the lamp that kept on burning and shining to show you the way and you were willing for a while to the light sun as you in yourselves in his light but i have my witness something greater weightier higher and better and when i heard the word weightier i looked up you know not just something heavy not just something that could be like of great like weight or something like that. But I saw it as something more serious, something more important, something, something more that just it's like something bigger, y'all. OK, something weightier, higher and better than that of John for the works that the father has appointed me to accomplish and finish the same the very same works that i am doing are a witness and proof that the father has sent me and the father who sent me has himself testified concerning me do you hear that and the father who sent me has himself testified concerning me not one of you has ever given ear. That's why it's important for you to hear. Okay. That's, in, that's why it's important for you to always listen and to hear. Okay. Not one of you has even given your ear to his voice or seen his form, his face, what he is like. Listen to this. You have always been deaf to his voice and blind to the vision of him. And the reason why that is, is because you're too busy listening to everybody else. You're too, see, sometimes you have to separate yourself from people to hear God's voice. You see what I'm saying? You're so busy getting all this advice from other people. You're so busy leaning to other people. But yet God said, put your trust in no man. I know sometimes people say, you know what, but but you're going to need some help. You're going to need some help. Yeah, you're going to need some help. But who did you consult with first? So that way God can direct you to who you should go to. You always have to make sure that you check in with him first. He's your father. OK, he's your father. I'm so glad that I got it a chance to know Jesus as my father. You see what I'm saying? I may not knew too much about my very own father but let me tell you something it's something how god is a jealous god but yet so many things go on around you just so that way he can try to get your attention to be focused on him if so many people can be can be misled by other men but yet you don't focus on who your real father is our father who art in heaven you know, you got to focus on him. He's the only father that we really have that we can really trust and believe in. You know, I know a lot of times a lot of our fathers out there have have probably like left us, like let us down and left us hanging and stuff like that, y'all. But that's a real, real sad thing, you know, and I wish there was more men out there that are fathers that can be more fathers to their sons and to their daughters because we really need that out there you know what i'm saying it may be too late for some people but it, it might not be too late for you to turn around you know and be a better you know be a better role model to your sons okay and to your daughters you know be better husbands to your wives and wives be better wives to your husband you know be better mothers because you are the examples that you you are the examples that the kids look up to. Do you understand that when 
Look at how when a son looks up to his father and he says, and he comes back with this and say, you know what? Well, I've seen my father do this. You know, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of those type of things when, when they go, well, I did this because I seen my father do it. You see what I'm saying? Or my father did this is the reason why I did it. You see what I'm saying? Isn't that sad? That is so sad because that a lot of times that that is true. You know, they do what they see that what their father do. But imagine when you walk in behind Jesus Christ. And you follow in his and you follow in his footsteps, okay? You walk in his image and you're doing what you see him do. You live in how you see him live. You see what I'm saying? You would be a much more better person just following God alone. Okay? So make sure you do that. All right, let's go back. Let's see where I'm at. Verse 38. And you have not his word. Oh, gosh, that is so sad. You have always been deaf to his voice and blind to the vision of him. And you have not his word, his thought, living in your hearts because you do not believe. See, because you do not believe and adhere to and trust in and rely on him whom he has sent. That is why you do not keep his message living in you. Because you do not believe in the messenger whom he has sent. Okay? You do not even believe in him or his word. How do you expect him to help you and to show you things? Okay? And to make things better for you. When you do not believe. Mm. That is something right there. You do not even keep it. In, you do not even keep his word in your heart. You do not search the scriptures. You do not even look for the answer. You don't seek. Do you look for your father or do you give up looking for him? No, you're going to keep on looking for him until you find him. You know, I know a lot of times, man, I don't know if y'all have ever done this. Have any of y'all out there ever been like, like children that have fathers, you know, in your lives and and you used to be disappointed you used to always look up there or wait on the porch and look out the window for your dad to come and he never shows up or he or he's never there isn't that sad if 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 i take that and you look at it in a spiritual way and you look up and you're looking for jesus and he's never there or he never comes you know that's if you don't believe but if you believe in him he will always show up. He will always be there. You don't have to look out the window. You don't have to wait for him because he's omnipresent and he lives right here in your heart. But you have to believe in him. And when you do, man, you can feel him. You know what I'm saying? When you read in the word of God, he will speak back to you. You understand? That's why it's important for you to have that one-on-one -on -one connection with him. Okay? Just like you would... For just like you would with a parent, just like you would with a father. You understand what I'm saying? You have to talk to him, y'all. I'm trying to tell you what you need to do. All right. Now let's go. It says, that's why you do not keep his message living in you because you do not believe in the messenger whom he has sent. Verse 39. Remember that. Search the scriptures. Here it is. You search and investigate and pour and pour over the scriptures diligently because... You suppose and trust that you have eternal life through them. You see that? You trust and believe that you have eternal life through them. And these very scriptures testify about me. You see how you always trying to make things about you? How do you guys always sit up here and try to use the word? That's why I be saying just like this, man. It's crazy how people be trying to sit up here and make this word be about them. You see what I'm saying? Stop trying to sit up here and then you 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 use the scriptures or you use the word to try to throw it at somebody to try to hurt them. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't even about you. You was not reading the word anyway to try to hurt somebody's feelings. And you're not even trying to read the word to, to correct what somebody is saying. You reading the word is because it's God's will. He It's his word. He has you to tell the word or read the word so that way it can come into that person's heart by them listening. And when they hear it, then they'll feel chastised by the sins that they're doing. 
because then when they get it into their heart and mind, once they get it and receive it, then they'll feel like, you know what? That word spoke to me. Not so much of just like this, man, you know what? I, I can't stand the way he, because sometimes, or I can't stand the way she, it's like, because sometimes it's you. you you're the one that's sitting up there doing it all wrong. You see what I'm saying? You're going about it all wrong. That is not what the word of God is for. When you teach the word and talk, you're supposed to tell his word so that way it can reach. How can it reach when you already judging, trying to reach? You cannot judge why are you reaching. You know, it's like you got a rope trying to throw a lasso, but you didn't even tie the knot in it yet. It's like you just swinging around a rope and you can't catch nothing. You know what I'm saying? God said, I will make you fishers of men. But how are you going to be fishers of men if you sitting up here and you can't catch nothing? You you sitting up here trying to, trying to fish without bait, trying to fish without a hook. How can you do that? How can you bring in anybody and you start pushing them away? You see what I'm saying? It's not you that's doing it anyway. It's the word of God that brings people in. It's the understanding when they hear it. You know what I'm saying? There's power in his word. And the power doesn't give you power to correct. The power doesn't give you power to judge. Okay? The only thing that you are is you are a willing vessel. So when you give that word of God, you letting the power of God go through you to them. You're supposed to let him use you. We're like filthy rags. You're supposed to let him use you so that way you can help somebody else. You see what I'm saying? All you can do is just give give, give him you so he can use you. Okay? You're supposed to keep your hands uh, clean from that from that filthiness that you're speaking out your mouth. You, you, you hurting more than you helping. You see what I'm saying? How can anybody would ever want to come to you and, and they feel bad about what they're doing is because of how you put them down and judge them. They didn't come. They can't even come to you because they're going to feel like, man, I don't know what, what she going to say about me. I don't know what he going to say about me. Instead of feeling like, you know what, man, I'm, I'm going to her because I want to understand a little bit more. I want to know a little bit more about the Lord. You know, you, you supposed to make people want to know more about him more than you, you making them not. But let's go. All right. This, this word right here is about Jesus. Every story in here. This was made flesh, y'all. The word of God was made flesh for us to tell these stories because God is in all of them, okay? He used all these people to tell these stories because it's all about him. It's all about the sins and all about the things that are in the world that he took to the cross, okay? And he defeated all of these things, okay? There's no beginning, but yet there's no end because he is the beginning of the end and the end to the beginning, Okay? Search the scriptures. Okay? He's Alpha and Omega. Let's keep going. All right? Verse 40 says, And still you are not willing, but refuse to come to me, so that you might have life. Ain't that something? He said right here, And these very scriptures testify about me. And still you are not willing, but refuse to come to me, so that you might have life. I receive not glory from man. I crave no human honor. I look for no mortal fame. Do you understand that? So in King James Version, verse 41 says, I receive not honor from man. <clears throat> so you're not supposed to be sitting up here looking for honor from no man. No praises from no man. You're not supposed to be sitting up here thinking that you're a God. You're not supposed to be up here sitting up there looking to be worshipped. Because you're just you're just like an idol. Whenever you put, try to put somebody on a pedestal or whenever you try to put yourself on a pedestal, that's what you're doing. You're becoming an idol, okay? You're becoming an idol worshiper or yet you are being an idol trying to be worshipped, okay? But yet you are a lowercase g god, okay? That's like a, face, a, a, a false god, a false prophet, you know what I'm saying? When you're trying to push out the, you know the the lord's word but yet leading people astray you see what i'm saying sometimes people can be these things but they don't even see that you see what i'm saying because what you're doing you're not leading 
you're pushing people away. Okay? You can't lead people and push them away at the same time. That's like having somebody stuck in between. That's just like you. You creating lukewarm uh, Christians by doing that. Okay? Because there's no power behind you that you're giving in the word of God. You do, you do not have the power that you're supposed to have when you have the Holy Spirit teaching and telling his word. You're becoming watered down when you sit up here and watering down his word by putting in your two cents, your judgments. You see what I'm saying? How do you suppose to have so much power, but yet you're so weak? You see what I'm saying? You're, you're in between. You want somebody to clap and praise you when the acknowledgement is supposed to be all about God. That's the only person that you, that's the only thing that you're supposed to be doing is praising God and giving God all the praise. That's the only reason why you're still here. That's the only reason why he gave you eternal life. You see what I'm saying? I know God uses a lot of us because some of us is just like, they'd be like, you know, how is she telling the word? How is he telling the word? Because he, he made a donkey talk. You see what I'm saying? He had to use whoever was willing. And he already knew who was going to be willing to do it. Isn't that sad? When we when we supposed to be looking at these people that we think that's supposed to have these collars on and these ties on and these suits on supposed to be bringing the word and, and and teaching us and telling us the word, but yet where are they? You see what I'm saying? We supposed to be having these people to break these things down to us that's supposed to be there already. You see what I'm saying? There's supposed to be power, power, the anointing. Okay, the anointing destroys the yokes. The anointing will, will touch you. Sometimes, man, it, it, even like when you're just coming into a room, you know what I'm saying? It will touch you. Even when you just get ready to start speaking, you say, you know what? I can feel I can feel the uh, the Lord, all of the Holy Spirit all over that person. You see what I'm saying? When you hear the word of God. But let's keep on going. All right? Ooh, because some of y'all, y'all be looking for you know, fame, you know what I'm saying? Y'all be looking for money. Y'all be looking for honor. You say, you know what? I did real good up in that. You see what I'm saying? I know I said that right. I said that's so good. You know what I'm saying? I should be getting paid for this. And that's crazy. When you're supposed to be doing it for the love of God, God is supposed to be um, getting acknowledged for this. You know, I know that that out there, y'all be saying, you know, I know I need money. I know I need this and stuff like that. But you got to give it to God. You have to give it to God. You have to give it to God. And if you do not give it, it's like an offering. Are you going to offer him your best, <laughs> like Abel? Or are you going to offer him, you know, your less, like Cain? You can only give out the seed that you, oh gosh, that you produce. So if you, if it's just like this, if you don't feel, if it's, it's like this, if you do not worship the Lord and do the right things in the right way, that's going to be like a bad seed. Whatever it is that you produce, it's not going to be no good. You see what I'm saying? But when you're doing things right and you offering everything up to God the right way, everything is going to be pure. You see what I'm saying? Because you you giving him the highest praise. You see what I'm saying? You giving him all the glory. You see what I'm saying? You're not just sitting up here just, just putting one foot in and one foot out. You see what I'm saying? And you'd be like this, you know why I did give my best. Nah, man, it's something, it's something missing, man. It's something that you're not doing. You know, it can be something so small that you're sitting up here and trying to give yourself self-praise for that you forgot that who did that for you. It's just like a stench in his nostril. You cannot do that. Let's go. But I know you. But I know you and recognize and understand that you have not the love of God in you. That's sad. I have come in my father's name and with his power and you do not receive me. Your hearts are not open to me. You give me no welcome. But if any, but if another comes in his own name and in his own power and with no other authority but himself, you will receive him and give him your approval. Ain't that something? It's just like this. He's saying it's something how you can sit up here and you don't believe in me, but yet 
somebody else can walk up here, but then y'all give them their, you, you give them your approval. You're like, yeah, yeah. And the only reason why you're giving them uh, your approval and, and stuff like that, because you, you sitting up here and you seeing how they look and how they dress and how they, you know, how, you know, however way they going on and stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. Look, he got advanced. He, he, he got money. He must be doing everything right. You see what I'm saying? You, you, you being, it's just like this. It's the illusion of things, okay? It's just like how it was with Jesus and, and devil in the wilderness. You know, he always try to paint an illusion for you, okay? He's trying to paint a thought, an illusion of what, of what, uh, for for y'all can sit up there and look at something and really want something that's not really even there. It's like false hope, okay? But anyways, but then y'all will accept that because of what. You think it looks like it should be. This is what you think success looks like when it don't look like that. This is what you, that's why I told you, this is what you think beautiful look like, but it don't really look like that. See, you only looking with your flesh eyes, but you ain't looking with your spiritual eyes. That's why you can't see. And that's why you don't know what beautiful is. That's why you can't see. And you don't know what love is. That's why you don't have the feeling and compassion that God has. You see what I'm saying? You don't have, you don't even know what love is. Do you see what I'm saying? All the things that y'all really think that you have a definition for, you don't really have. A lot of times we sit up here and we look for definitions, right? Let's say that. Let's say just like me, I look up definitions and stuff like that. But it's something how I can look up a definition on the phone, right? But then... God can give me a whole different definition spiritually. You know, even though I take them both into hand, it's just like this. What God gives me is greater. And he gives me something greater and spiritually more greater than what I looked up. It's something just like I told y'all the story back in the day. <clears throat> I had like a couple of friends and stuff like that. And it's something because I'm mixed with a lot of things. But yet, you know what I'm saying? When I grew up also... You know what I'm saying? There was a lot of different cultures that I was around. And not only like a lot of different cultures that I was around, it's like a lot of different cultures that I wanted to know, that I wanted to study, that I wanted to learn about. You see what I'm saying? Even even the small cultures, you know, I was around the Lao, the Oriental, the Samoans. You, you see what I'm saying? The Africans, the Ethiopians, the Somalians, the, the Pandamanians, the Dominicans, the Puerto Ricans, the Cubanos. You see what I'm saying? All of these, the Creole, the, all the different type of, oh gosh, all these different type of languages and stuff like that. I used to always like being around different all the time. You see what I'm saying? So I never really just liked it to be like like around just like one group of a race of people. You know, I used to like all different types of, of race of people. You see what I'm saying? Because everybody do something different, but yet we judge people. Isn't that something how we judge one another? But everybody's different in their culture. You see what I'm saying? Some people are different the way that they talk. Some people are different that the, the way that they eat. You know, a lot of, we are different the way that we look and the way that we do things. We were made differently. We, God made us this way. Everything that he made was good. We are all a body of Christ. But yet, look at you. You don't believe, so that way you don't know. You're not a part of the animal kingdom. You're not a part of the body of Christ because you ain't even came into the knowing of who you are. You don't even, you don't even see the promised land. You, you're going to wander around in the wilderness until it's too late. Do you see what I'm saying? He made us all for a reason. We were all made differently for a reason. Okay? Them tongues, that babble, them different languages spread it across the whole entire world. Because we were going to all be made different in his sight. <sighs> let, let me just go because I, I don't want to go there. Because, you know, I'm, I I can go there, y'all. I'll be, man, I'll be, I'll be deep on some stuff. But I, I know sometimes a lot of people don't understand me. But it's cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember I, t I told y'all the story about the the um, the answer that I found in the back of the book. The teacher told us that we needed to go in the back of the book to get the correct answer, right? And I'm sitting up in there with my friend, you know, and, and my couple of friends and stuff like that. I won't go on the story real long and everything. But it was just like this. I saw the answer 
And I was just like, you know what, this answer, it, this answer right here is, is not right. You know, I didn't, you know, we got our scratch paper and everything like that. I'm writing it down. I said, hold up, because you know, I, I really love some math. You see what I'm saying? And, and my friends that that I got around people that were smart. If I wasn't smart, I got around somebody who was smart. Or let's just say I didn't know the answer, or or something was difficult. I wanted to make sure I was around people that knew. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes we don't know everything, but get around people who do. And that answer in the back of the book the teacher told me to correct my work with was wrong, y'all. It was wrong. I told you that should have been in the newspaper. Because imagine the pass down to all of these kids that's getting that same book. is getting them same wrong answers, okay? All over the world. All over the world. And we sitting up here thinking that, you know what I'm saying? That is, that is right. And a lot of times, this happens a lot of times. We can sit up here and I'm just like, why do I have a B when I should have an A? Isn't that something? How one little apple can spoil the bunch. How one little answer can be wrong. People don't think that they can make mistakes, but you can make mistakes. But you know what? You have time to make that change. So try to do that. Make that change right now. Correct whatever it is that you're doing. And if you can't, a lot of times you just need the word of the Lord to correct you. You see what I'm saying? Because he'll show you the right way to go. But you have to believe. You have to believe to see that pathway. You know what I mean? I I'm telling you, y'all. It's like a whole blueprint. Sometimes you can see these things in the Bible. And symbols become words. And words become symbols. And and it, and it, and, and not, not just becoming symbols. But it's just like, it, it just... It's just like a whole like secret passage, you know, but it all of it, what it's for is for you to get to know Jesus so you can know Jesus and have him before he comes. OK, so repent from your sins and turn from your wicked ways and and believe in him. I just see so many things just reading, you know, even titles sometimes, even just the word. Sometimes a lot of time people think you need to read so many books, but. How you going to read so many books and you ain't even understand the one that's important right in front of you, which is the Bible. All right. How can you get understanding to be able to read something else if you ain't got the understanding of this? Let's go. Hmm. I have come in my father. I have come in my father's name and with his power and you do not receive me. Your hearts are not open to me and you give me no welcome. But if any. I always say that, <laughs> if any. but if another comes in his own name and his own power and with no other authority but himself, you will receive him, right? And give him your approval. How is it possible for you to believe? How can you learn to believe you who are content to seek and receive praise and honor and glory from one another and yet? Do not seek the praise and honor and glory which come from him who is, who alone is God. It's like, who alone is God? Like, how can you, when he is everything, all these other things you're giving so much glory and honor to and praise to when he is God alone, just for him just being God. How you don't see him as being immaculate in your life? The head, the head honcho everything he's your everything you can't do nothing without him how can you give praises to anything else boy oh boy oh boy okay i'd rather have a number one than a two okay but that's your order that's what you want to order up let's go put out of your minds verse 45 put out of your minds the thought and do not suppose as some of you are supposing that i will accuse you before the father there is one who accuses you it is moses the very one on whom you have built your hopes in and whom you trust that's what he's saying right you put your trust in him i remember when i was reading the word i was just like this look at them sitting up there talking about like this you know what ah oh, nah because you know what we heard this word from so and so so and so and this word from so and so and moses this and but moses said this and you know what how you gonna say i'm like this is jesus right here he's the one this is his word he the one that gave moses the word how you think he got that word when he gave it to him and you sitting up saying well you know what mm-mm 
because I know Moses said this, and this is supposed to be how you gonna who you say you are. I'm like, if you listen to how he speak, don't he speak just like what you reading in, what you believing in? He's speaking the word. It's him. Oh man, I'll just tell you, I, I, man. God shows us so much in the word of God, how you can just talk to people and they just, they just, just like I'm telling you, stuck on stupid. They just be just stuck and stunned. But you know what? I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge because you never know where you are in your life until you get Jesus. to. to I'm telling you, you, you don't know where you're in life until you get him because you, you don't have to, you don't even have to call nobody nothing no more. Because when you see him, you just kind of shake your head because you'll say, if you only had the Lord. That's why God tells you, be kind to those who despitefully use you. He always tell you, I'll make your enemy your footstool. He always tell you, I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And the reason why he tell you, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. He always say all of these things because he's trying to tell you, you are greater than, you are greater than them. You are greater than that. Okay? You don't even have to act like you you bowed about it. You bowed about it. You don't even have to act like that, man. You don't even have to. You don't have to do nothing, man. Because if you will only see what it is that they really going through, if you will only see that, if because they don't have God, that's why they acting like that. I'm telling you, if they only knew what you knew, I'm, I'm telling you. But yet they trying to fight you over it, right? They trying to kill you over it because you got the knowledge of God. They they want to hurt you because you got it. And they mad they don't got it. All you had to do was get, <laughs> believe. All you had to do was repent, turn from your wicked ways, okay? All you had to do was take the same direction, same road that I'm taking, but yet you want to sit up here. You, I mean, what you think you're going to get by trying to do something to me? Is that going to make you get it? You still not going to get the word. You have to seek for yourself, Oh, man, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes it just it don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. That That's why when there's no more love, that's why when there was no more love, God just wiped it off. He was just like this. Let me start over again. Because it's just like, look at this. There is no more love out here. Look at all this stuff that's going on, y'all. Why is people acting this way? Strange acting. You see what I'm saying? Just just acting a, a plum, just, just done lost it. Just, just killing each other, hurting each other, just it, over anything. You, where my twenty dollars at? You, you, anything, anything, any old thing. You know, there ain't no more love. For if you believe and rely on Moses, you would believe and rely on me. Hello, for he wrote about me personally. Do you hear that? For he wrote about me personally. Let's go back here in the in the front of this Bible. Let me show y'all something. Huh. Genesis says at the top, King James, the first book of Moses called Genesis. Ain't it something? Moses wrote, he said he wrote about it. He wrote about me personally how he was. Do y'all realize that? Moses wrote personally how God was. He knew how God spoke. He knew the word of God. He knew exactly how the way that God was in the beginning. When God created, Moses knew. Mm, I'm, 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 go back to the beginning. Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. Read the title. Read it again. Moses knew, Moses knew this. But y'all wonder why he's so great. But yet, then you turn around and you don't see who the creator was though. And all of this is about God. It's all for you to acknowledge who the creator is, which is Jesus Christ. It's God. <sighs> but last verse 47, you are. But if you do not believe and trust his writings, how then will you believe and trust my teachings? Question mark. How shall you cleave and rely on my words? question mark you tell me that king james says but if ye believe not his writings how shall ye believe my words and he end up with a question mark how how can you how can you if you do not believe everything that i've said and you guys are sitting up and saying well this person wrote this well, well no with well, that person wrote that you don't think that god already had this laid out 
who was going to write what, where this was going to be found, how this was going to be told. He already knew that, y'all. <laughs> but you don't believe. You sitting up here trying to say, well, you know what? This is missing out of here. You know, you know what the word should have said? You know what this is? Everything was for a reason. If that's not in there, it's because it wasn't supposed to be there. If the Bible didn't say that, it's because it wasn't supposed to be said. Everything that's here has been repeated history over and over and over and over again. And the only thing you was to do was to believe in his word. That's all you were supposed to do. For you to see something else, you had to believe him first. It's just like this. How you expect to see me and you don't believe? You can't see me if you don't believe. You can't have visions. If, <laughs> nothing. Ooh, I, I'm just telling you. I love y'all out there. And I know this is going on and I don't want to assume. But you know what? God told me to say this. He gave me the word. You feel me? The Holy Spirit always speak to me. And whatever he gives me, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it all. <laughs> I'm here for it all. I love y'all out there. If nobody told you you're beautiful today, you are just the way that you are. All right? I tell y'all that all the time because you are. No matter what nobody says, no matter what you have on, no matter what it is that you're doing, y'all. I love y'all out there. Keep doing you. You see what I'm saying? Keep, to keep doing you. Keep doing you. But don't get so caught up in doing you. When you there's one that's above you, and that's Jesus Christ. All right? Later.